So we're coming up towards the end of 2022 and I don't know about you but my Decembers consist of two activities. Number one is anything Christmas, obviously, and number two is the desperate dash to complete my Goodreads challenge for the year. That sort of like dead time between Christmas and New Year's every year is literally me just on the sofa reading vigorously to try and finally reach that challenge. This year I did really well, I actually reached my challenge literally in like August I think, I set a challenge of 40 books, I did it, don't ask me how, I really don't know how, so I upped it to 55 and I'm still about 5 books out from the challenge I think, so don't worry I'm still going to be joining you on that mad dash. Before those last few books every year I always try and find books that are really quick to read, they're not going to take up too much energy and I can just like blast through in even like a few hours if I can and that's what today's video is going to be me recommending to you quick easy reads that will help you reach your Goodreads goal. Some of these books you can see them here are just easy reads like really really quick reads my back just clicked I really hope you heard that. Um, some of these are just easy reads they've got like slightly different formats which make you just like gloss through them really quickly others are just fast reads are like compelling you want to turn the page you don't want to put it down until you're done so with that I suppose let's get started oh no I really should have put these in order as to how I'm talking about them but you know what it's too late now we're committed it's just gonna stay like this <laughs> So the first easy quick read book I want to recommend to you today is Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. This is a novel written in verse, meaning it is such a quick read. She looks fairly chunky, she is about 400 pages long. I read this in about three hours because there's only about that many words on every page. <laughs> I had this book on my bookshelves for the longest time before I finally picked it up and read it because I just didn't think I was going to like the sort of novel in verse poetry style writing. I'm not a big poetry person, I just, I take things at face value, I find it really hard to like look into things and find deeper meanings, it's just not how my brain works. So poetry for me has always been like a no-no, my English literature A level, I've really struggled with like the poetry section. But this was actually really good because it's not poetry. I mean, it is poetry, it's not poetry. Like, this is a full story written just in verse. You don't have to look any deeper for any deeper meaning. Like, it's all there. The best way I can actually probably describe how this is written is, like, it's like Taylor Swift lyrics. You know how she tells a story through her lyrics and it's always, like, all there encased in one song? That's what reading this felt like. It felt like reading a Taylor Swift song. Which I don't know about you, but that is pretty much the highest praise I can give anything ever. Um, so this is a story of two sisters. So there's Yahara and... What's the other sister called? Camino. And they are separated by country. So one of them lives in the Dominican Republic, one of them lives in New York. They are half-sisters, but neither of them know that the other exists. If I remember correctly. I read this like well over a year ago now, but I don't think either of them knows about the other. Um, and then their father suddenly dies and through their grief they find each other and it's just a story of sort of sisterhood and familial love and that bond but also grief and sort of working your way through family trauma and that sort of generational trauma of lies and all that is just a really beautiful book. The narrative switches between Yahara and Camino, and although they're like really similar girls, they're literally sisters, they have two really distinct voices which I really really liked. I often find when you're like switching point of views you've got to go for like very different characters because otherwise it's very easy to get confused. Not in this book. It's just a really really quick read and I love it and I keep saying it but I need to pick up more Elizabeth Acevedo stuff. I really really do. The second book I have for you is Convenience Store Woman by Siaka Murata. Now you're probably thinking to yourself, Georgia, you didn't give this one a very good review, you didn't like it very much, and that is true, I didn't like this very much personally for me, but this book has raved about, like people really, really do love this book, and if it's your type of novel, then you will love it. I personally just didn't. Like this isn't a book that I'm like, nobody read ever, it's like, it's not that bad, it's just not my personal taste. And the reason I'm recommending it in this one is because it's so short, it's literally under 200 pages long, it's well under 200 pages long, it's like 160 pages, that is it, and it's a really really quick read. It did take me like three evenings of like sitting down and getting stuck in, just because I wasn't that taken with the story, but other people, if this is your kind of story, you can literally read this in an hour or two. 
This is a story of a woman called Kiko and she has worked in a convenience store for 18 years. Like she's in her mid 30s, she's worked at the same store since she was like 18 years old. And nobody can understand why she's so content working in the store. Like her family are begging her to like find a better job, get a career, get a family, like find a husband. And Kiko's just like, no, I'm pretty happy doing what I'm doing. She just sees herself as like a cog in the convenience store machine. She doesn't like it when her colleagues think of her as like a human being outside of the convenience store with like a life and like family and friends. Like she, all she wants is just to be a cog in this store and she is very happy with that, very content with that. That is her entire world. It has this really like strange absurdist humour which I think is the reason that I didn't really enjoy it very much. I just didn't get the humour in this. Like there were moments where I was like oh yeah haha but it wasn't that funny and also I was just more concerned for Kiko than anything else. You can see my full review of it, I'll link the video down below. Um, but I think people do really enjoy this. I think it is meant to make you think, I think it is meant to make you uncomfortable. It just wasn't personally for me but you will probably love it because most people do. Georgia, I hear you cry. Are you ever gonna shut up about Sadie by Courtney Summers? No, is my answer to that. No, I am not ever gonna shut up about this book. I love this book. This, I should probably start by saying, is a very dark book. It is not one for the faint-hearted. It covers some really, really intense subjects. But the reason I'm recommending it here is because it is a page turner. Once you start it, you will not want to put this down. This is a mystery thriller book following the story of Sadie whose younger sister Mattie was murdered and Sadie then goes on a mission to try and sort of avenge her sister's death. So Sadie has essentially gone missing, Mattie is dead and a radio personality and podcast host called Wes McRae comes in and starts making a podcast about Sadie's disappearance and he is like always two steps behind her. He is trying to solve the mystery of where she is, where she's gone um, through these like podcast transcripts in this book, which I find really, really interesting because Courtney Summers did a really, really good job at being able to get the exact tone of a podcast down on these pages. It literally reads exactly like a podcast. As you can see, it's like interviews in like a transcript form. It is so well written. I really, really enjoyed it, um, which I think really lends like the page turning element of this book. <laughs> like you just want to find out. Especially if you're a big fan of podcasts, like if you do like listening to podcasts, you will love this book so much. Um, so you've got Wes McRae's point of view via the podcast, and then you've got Sadie's point of view herself, who is always two steps ahead on the journey. She never explicitly says to you as the reader, like, where she's going, what she's doing, but you sort of piece it together through Sadie's perspective and through Wes McRae's podcast. I just really, really enjoyed this book, and I feel like ever since I read it, I think I must have read it about a year ago now, I feel like I've been on a search for a book that will give me the same feeling that this book gave me. I just really, really enjoyed it. I kind of got there with Did You See Melody by Sophie Hanna, but it's not quite there. So if anybody knows of any other books like this where maybe parts of it are in like podcast form or interviews or like transcripts of any form, let me know because I just really, really like this. Actually, whilst we're speaking of books in a transcript interview kind of form, I've got to talk about Daisy Jones and the Six. This is by Taylor Jenkins Reid, the god, the goddess of books right now, Taylor Jenkins Reid. This whole book is formatted as the transcript of an interview or interviews with members of the band Daisy Jones and the Six, this massive fictional rock band from like the 60s and 70s. Through these interviews you're learning about the story of Daisy Jones, she is obviously the main character, the frontliner of this band, she had a really difficult childhood and she becomes this like rock star and then she joins with a band called The Six, hence Daisy Jones and The Six. And you're basically, there's an element of mystery throughout this book that you're sort of piecing together through the interviews. I wouldn't say it's like a mystery book, but there's a mystery in it that you're trying to solve as the reader, if that makes sense. I don't know how to say it without spoiling, I really don't. <laughs> I have seen a lot of reviews of people saying they just couldn't get the flow of this book and because it is all written in this interview form I understand why some people probably wouldn't like that very much but for me personally I read this book so quickly I just stormed through it because it's so easy and it flows so nicely. I see a lot of people saying this is an amazing one to listen to in audiobook form. I personally haven't listened to the audiobook, I really really want to 
because I bet that would be amazing. This is literally like just the script for an audiobook. And if you are struggling to reach that Goodreads goal, audiobooks, they count. They very, very much count. You are listening to a book. It's the same as reading it. You're just listening to it. You're absorbing that story. It counts. This is a part of the Taylor Jenkins Reid literary universe. It's like in the same world as Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and Malibu Rising and Carrie Soto. But you don't need to read those to get this book. They're all standalones. Um, what else have I written in my notes about this? Um, this covers different topics like addiction, feminism, it has romantic relationships that are all like woven into the band. I love it, obviously. I really need to find better ways to express how much I love books in these videos without just being like, I love it, it's really good. I, I drove myself mad when I'm editing because I don't realise I'm doing it and I'm editing and I'm like, just find better words. Find better words. For somebody who reads as much as me, you would think I'd have like a better dictionary of words to pick from in my head, but no, I'm just like, it's great, I love it. I hate myself. <laughs> Next up in my notes, I've just written literally anything by Lucy Foley. Here are two of Lucy Foley's books. So I've got The Paris Apartment and The Guest List. I do have The Hunting Party as well, but I've lent it to a friend to read. Lucy Foley's books are fantastic, mostly locked in mysteries. This one's slightly less locked in mystery, but they're basically fast murder mysteries. Like once you pick up a Lucy Foley book, you are not going to want to put it down. Like I swear to you, I read most of her books in about two days. It would be quicker than that, but I am an adult with responsibility. So sadly I can't sit around reading all day every day, but two days is pretty quick for me to get through a book. That's generally quite thick. I find Lucy Foley's mysteries super, super gripping, but they're not very convoluted, which I really like. Like you don't need to sort of read between the lines and like absolutely scour every single page for these tiny clues that might sort of help you as the reader get the answer. They're not that kind of mystery. They're just regular mysteries that are easy to read through. They're not too heavy. Like the subject matters are generally heavy because mysteries do generally mean there's a murder somewhere, but they're not like super heavy in terms of like general subject matters, I suppose. Every book has sort of multiple points of view, so every chapter switches between different characters. They're all really, really short. I find books with short chapters are much easier to read than books with like these big chunky chapters. Um, so the guest list is set on a remote island off the coast of Ireland, and it's a wedding party, and a character is found dead very, very early on. And, but you don't know which character is dead and nor do you know who is responsible for the murder because it's got to be somebody on this remote island. The hunting party is your very classic cabin in the woods kind of mystery. One of the characters turns up dead, you don't know which character and nor do you know which character is responsible for killing them although it has to be one of the characters. And the Paris apartment is slightly different, you do know from very early on who the dead character is. Um, and this is set in a apartment block in Paris and it's got to be one of the people who lives in the apartment block responsible for the murder. This one I found super thrilling. I really enjoyed this one. I do still think The Hunting Party is my favourite, but most people will say The Guest List is their favourite one. So take from that what you will. Along a very similar vein, we have pretty much anything by Karen McManus. This is a prop. This is You'll Be the Death of Me by Karen Manus, obviously. Um, she writes murder mysteries, but for a YA audience. So they're automatically much less heavy. They're much easier to read. They are YA, but to me, they don't necessarily read like YA, if that makes sense. Like sometimes you'll read a young adult book and you'll feel so old reading it, especially if you're my age, 28. But Karen Manus books, I never feel super old reading them. I just find them quick, fun, enjoyable reads. So her other books are One of Us Is Lying, One of Us Is Next, Two Can Keep a Secret and The Cousins. This one, You'll Be the Death of Me. And there's also a brand new one release, which I can't remember the name of, but I haven't read it yet. If I'm gonna recommend any Karen Manners book to you, I'd probably say One of Us Is Lying or The Cousins. I really enjoyed The Cousins. Um, yeah, they're just easy, very easy to read. Moving on to a book that I actually don't have to show you because I lent it to my sister and she hasn't given it back to me yet is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. This book is super, super popular, especially on TikTok. I read it, I didn't necessarily love it myself. I found it quite difficult to get through, I suppose. But some people, most people do really, really enjoy this book. I find it very Marmite, like some people really love it, some people don't. So maybe this is a risky one to be recommending today. But it's super, super short. It's a mystery with, what is the main character called? Did I write it down? Is it in my notes? Did write it down, God, I'm good. 
Cadence Sinclair. So she's a member of this really, really wealthy family. And every single summer, her and her cousins go to their grandfather's island, like their family's island, like off the coast of like New England in America, I think. And one year she goes and just everything's changed. People are acting really, really strange around her. And she's clearly sick. Like you as a reader, you realise she's sick, but she doesn't quite realise that, I don't think. And you're basically piecing together what happened to her, why everyone's acting really strange. And it's very obvious, obviously it's called We Were Liars. Somebody's lying to her. Like there's a big secret and nobody's telling her what it is. Um, and that's what the story is. I found it really hard to read, I think, because I found the writing really, really stilted, which makes sense. I don't want to spoil anything, but it does make sense with what the book is about. But I found the writing style really, really hard to read. But my sister read it and she said she really enjoyed it. Most people do really enjoy it. Um, it's just a mystery without death necessarily. The book kind of reads like diary entries where you're missing half the entry. Like you're missing a load of the context which makes each of the diary entries make sense. And then it does make sense at the end. But it's frustrating when you as a reader you're reading a full book just to hope that at the end it makes sense. I don't feel like I'm not selling it very well. Like loads of people really, really do love the book. It's very, very short, could be a good one to try and get you up to that Goodreads goal. Another one I want to recommend but I don't actually have on me is My Sister the Serial Killer by Oyin Kan Braithwaite. This again is a really, really short book. Again, everyone raves about this book, people really love it. And you know what? I also love this one, yay. This book is so short and so gripping that I literally read this on a train journey from Reading to Waterloo. That's one hour, 20 minutes. I read the entire book on this one train journey. So if that doesn't say everything you need to know, I don't know what will. This is basically a story of sisterhood, but like to the extreme. So you've got Ayula who just has a real problem with murdering her boyfriend and her sister has to keep coming in and cleaning up after her, like literally and figuratively. Like Ayula literally kills her boyfriends, pretty much expecting her sister Crede to come in and fix up her messes. Only then Ayula sets her sights on Corede's long-term crush, like the love of her life, who she's never actually made a move on. But like, she's been obsessed with this man for years and Ayula's decided that she wants him, but Corede knows that whenever Ayula wants a man, he always ends up dead. A lot of people call this a thriller. I don't think I'd necessarily call this a thriller, I don't think. It's just a very dark novel with very dark humour as well. Um, and I really, really enjoyed it. But if you do want a genuine thriller to read, Verity by Colleen Hoover. Yes, I know this is another one that I recommend in like every video I do. This fully deserves the hype it gets. If Colleen Hoover could just keep writing thrillers, just forget the romance. I don't care for the romance. Colleen Hoover, if you're watching, listen to me. I want more of this. I love this. So good. So this is the story of a woman called Lowen. And Lowen's a struggling writer, because of course there's always, writers are always struggling, clearly. Um, and she gets the opportunity to come in as a ghostwriter for her favourite author ever, Verity Crawford. And Verity, it turns out, has been in a really bad, like, car accident, or I can't remember. She's been in a bad accident of some kind, and she is essentially comatose. She is in bed, unable to move, not conscious. And Verity has to come in, not Verity, Lowen has to come in and finish Verity's very, very popular series. Like, her fans are waiting for the next installment of the book, and nobody really wants people to know that Verity is in such a bad way. So Lowen literally moves into Verity's house with Verity's husband Jeremy so she can have access to all of sort of Verity's notes, all of her previous books, like everything in her office, she needs access to it so she can finish these books. Of course, a romance ensues between Lowen and Jeremy, but also some very creepy things start happening and Lowen finds a manuscript written by Verity, which seems to be a confession of kinds. And I'm not gonna tell you what is in the manuscript because that is what makes this book so creepy. This book, I swear to you, once you pick it up, you cannot put it down. I stayed up one night until like three in the morning finishing this, like way later than I would ever usually stay up because I just had to know what was going on. It is completely gripping. And I have heard many, many other people saying exactly the same thing as well. So I do think if you're struggling to find that book that's really gonna grip you and help you get to that goal, this has got to be it. It is so dark. But it's not like dark enough that it's going to stop you sleeping at night. There's a line, and I feel like this errs on like the you still can sleep at night kind of side of the line. <laughs> and then, what you've all been waiting for, you've probably seen in the background of this entire video, 
is the Heartstopper series. I have had these on my shelf for so long and I literally only picked these up and finally read them this week. I was just worried. I love the Heartstopper series on Netflix so much. I was like, what if I don't like the books or don't like the graphic novels, I should say, and then it ruins it for me. But luckily, Alice Oseman, she never fails. She's amazing. These books, graphic novels, so good. And the fact that it is a graphic novel means that it's super, super, super quick to read, which is amazing. So I've got volumes one, two, three, and four. Each one of these probably takes me anywhere from half an hour to 45 minutes to read, which is so fast. You can definitely just sit down and do all four versions, versions, volumes in one night. I just love these so much. Like I finished these and I was like, I must rewatch Heartstopper immediately. And then I did. Nick and Charlie hold such a special place in my heart. Like, you know me, anything queer. I haven't even said what these are about. Heartstopper is a story of Nick and Charlie who are a couple. They meet when Charlie's in year 10 at school, Nick is in year 11, and they start sitting next to each other in form and they fall for each other. They fall in love and it's very gay and very romantic and just so heartwarming. I do really enjoy a graphic novel. I think I said in a recent video actually, I was a big Beano and Dandy lover when I was growing up for like comics and anything like that. I'm really into it. And this has made me want to read more graphic novels because it just, I don't know why, I just never really pick them up. I, if I want a book, like I want a book, you know, but it's just so cute. I just love these so much. And the best thing about the fact that there are four volumes here means they count as four books on Goodreads. So I sat down and read all these in about two days and <laughs> I added four books to my Goodreads, making me that much closer to actually being able to complete my 55 book challenge for the year. So that, I'll tell you what, if you are wanting to reach your challenge and you're only a couple books away, Heartstopper, 100%. Although I do really hope they're still in stock places, I ordered these immediately after watching Heartstopper series. And whilst volume one came really quickly, the other volumes took like three, four weeks to arrive because it was just sold out everywhere. So hopefully you'll be able to get them by the end of the year. But if not, they're also a web series. So you can literally read these online, which is just amazing. So there you go, there are a load of books you can read to try and reach your Goodreads goal. If you've got any other recommendations, like quick reads for the end of the year, let me know down below if you know of anything, anything at all that's even kind of similar to Sadie with Courtney Summers, please tell me, please. Are the rest of her books the same sort of style? I've sort of read the synopsis on Goodreads of the rest of her books, but it doesn't seem like anything else is like Sadie. But let me know if you read them. Thank you so much for watching today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.